All right, welcome to Vicky3 Academy. I'm Walker, and here we are on We Play Games discussing monuments today. So monuments are a special type of building that exist in usually very specific uh, specific locations. You can kind of count a skyscraper as in, in the canals as monuments, but they're kind of different too. Um, and so I'm just going to mostly be discussing the things that are like really very obviously monuments. Um, and those will be the historical buildings. So we, we've pre-built the other ones, the ones that have special locations. Um, just so we can talk about all of them in the same context. The first one we want to talk about, uh, we'll just go through in, in alphabetical order, Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat is a special one. So there are going to be a couple of other ones that are going to give you a 10% bonus to devout political strength. Those are really good if you're trying to keep the devout powerful. This one is good if you're trying to keep the devout powerful, but it's also such a large bonus that um, if you aren't careful, it can help the devout be powerful even if you don't want them to be. 25%'s a lot. The biggest thing that makes it like not spooky to an industrial power, of course, is that if you build a lot of things, um, you won't have particularly powerful monks anyway, and unless you unless you go out of your way to make sure that they stay powerful. So the 25% is one of these things. It's 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 helpful. It's helpful until it isn't, but fortunately, at the time that it stops being helpful, you usually have a way to get out of it. It does come pre-built here in Siamese Cambodia, and that means that the flat prestige that, that it generates goes to Siam, which is going to help them maintain their rank power. All of these uh, monuments are going to come with some prestige attached to them. Some of them are going to be just prestige, um, but, but at the end of the day, the prestige, it's very, very useful when you're small. Generally, it doesn't scale as well into the later game, but don't worry about that, because of course, like they're mostly here for for flavor and fun models, um, and then a handful of them do have nice little bonuses, like the twenty five percent devout political strength. All right, so then we'll go. We're just going to go in in alphabetical order. The next one that we have to deal with is one of them that you have to actually build in game, um, and it's Big Ben. So Big Ben is this guy right here. It's a hundred employment. All of them come with this urbanization thing, but this is not like 20 urbanization levels. It's 20 points, which is like a normal factory, nothing crazy. But this one is really good. Um, throughput is one of these bonuses that's going to scale really, really well as you go throughout the game, kind of no matter what. Um, you don't have to have a powerful devout. You don't have to be interested in necessarily getting tons of prestige, although you do get ex extra prestige out of Big Ben. Um, but it's this throughput bonus. Throughput bonuses basically just make it so that your factories kind of work on a larger scale. So you don't need any more pops to go in, but you, if you have higher throughput, more resources go in, but more resources come out with the same amount of modifying labor. So throughput is a very, very strong, um, bonus, and this is going to be applying this throughput bonus in the entirety of home counties. So if you're going to stack London into outer space, Big Ben is going to help you. And of course, because it is, um, it's Big Ben, it's, it is fixed to, to location there. I wish, I wish they had a, a, a mini map, but it's okay. We, we'll scale, pop right over here to Beijing. All right, so here in Beijing, we find the next one. Um, alphabetically, we find Forbidden City. Forbidden City is a spicy monument. First of all, it comes with a flat authority bonus. For those of you who try to do authority stacking, um, flat authority bonuses are really, really, really strong because they are the base things that all of these percent multipliers get piled on top of. Right now, we don't have a lot of them, but we'll, as you do research and as you move into command economy or whatever, you will find ways to get your authority insanely high, but you have to have base authority in order to get there. And so if you're trying to play um, any sort of any sort of uh, any, any any sort of country that's going to use repressive tactics, whether it is a reactionary or a, a, a communist dictatorship, um, you, authority and this base authority here out of Beijing is really, really strong. You also get 20 legitimacy from including the head of state in government, which means that um, Forbidden City not only gets you extra authority, but it also means that when you're trying to do law work, if you can figure out a way to get rid of your landowner and have literally anybody else here, um, that you can have enormous amounts of legitimacy and therefore can do lots of law work and can run really high taxes while also doing lots of law work, which is just a, an amazing combination of, of things in the event that you want to, to really juice this number. Um, so this one, Forbidden City, I think I think this is a, a an easy one to to sleep on until you see the the effects in action and once you see the effects in action you realize oh holy crap 
This one might be one of the best, the best uh, monuments in the game right now. All right, so then we have Hagia Sophia. Um, the Hagia Sophia out here in Eastern Thrace and Constantinople. I've actually been to Constantinople. It was really, really fun. Um, the Hagia Sophia was cool, but the Blue Mosque was cooler. Uh, the <laughs> don't 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 tell uh, Ahmed. He'll, he'll get mad. Ahmed the first. He's he's the dude who over oversaw the construction of the Blue Mosque, and he'll he'll, he'll be mad that I'm comparing his uh, his beauty to to this with such blasphemy. But ten percent is um, the more normal amount that you're going to get out of out of a religious building. So remember that Anchor Watt gave us twenty five percent. Hagia Sophia and a lot of these other guys are going to be ten. But other than that, they're basically the same um just treat them where if you if you really 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 want to do massive devout politi uh, political power stacking then you do need to prioritize getting um these monuments under your control um but if you're if you don't then they're just like a neat little flavor bonus at the beginning of the game more or less okay so the mosque of jenna this is another one that you need to build in order to actually have it in in place um let's go ahead and let this employment there we go the Mosque of Jenna you have to build, but it gets you 20% education access locally, which is really sweet. Um, it, it That 20% education access is going to increase the literacy locally pretty significantly. Um, and so just just keep in mind that if you can get the Mosque of Jenna down pretty early, then you probably should. It's just it's going to be kind of expensive to build, especially considering that you are Messina. Um, it's it's going to be it's going to be hard for Messina to be able to build it. But but hey, maybe Sokoto can like conquer them and help them out or something like that. But the Mosque of Jenna, because it gives you this 20% education access on top of the normal um, devout political strength, it, you do note it is not getting you any extra prestige, but that's okay. It like ultimately you need to understand that that small amount of prestige it's mostly just there for the beginning of the game to help people um, bully their their neighbors. Next one we have is Saint Basil's or Saint Basil's uh, Cathedral. I wish yeah there we go. I wish I was better at finding these guys on the map. Here we go Saint Basil's Cathedral. This one same as the the Hagia Sophia. 10% devout, 25 prestige, 20 urbanization. That that that's a, a mix that you'll see a couple of times. And then out here we have the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty is a, another one that you have to build, but it's very spicy. 25% migration attraction that you get from a monument that you can't build anywhere else means that um, the United States, if everything else is held equal, um, will have an easier way to to pull migrants to to their territory until someone you know conquers. The, the statue uh, 75 prestige is a, a lot of prestige but again don't don't get too hung up on just flat prestige bonuses because they they don't do too too much for you hey there we go look at that the the statue of liberty yeah the the flat prestige bonuses don't do too much for you at the uh, outside of the beginning of the game but at the beginning of the game they can be pretty they can be pretty nice pretty neat all right, so then we'll hop over to India uh, to see the Taj Mahal, which I think probably needs something else here, because right now it's literally just a little bit of prestige and urbanization. Um, there are there are a couple of monuments that are like this, and so don't feel like the Taj Mahal specifically is getting is getting shafted. But 25 prestige, 20 urbanization means that if you're playing as Jaipur, you're going to have a much 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 higher rank than you would normally. Um, and so if you're trying to you know throw the, the East India Company out of out of India, it might be helpful to play as, as Jaipur um, simply for this, or it might be helpful to just conquer um, Jaipur, <laughs> so that way you take this for yourself. Um, next we have the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower out here in Paris. The Eiffel Tower is a pure prestige bomb. That's it. It's just, it's pure prestige. Um, it's, it's looks beautiful on the map. Uh, that's that's about it. Like because it, this one is coming out of of Paris rather than out of Jaipur, um, where you know rank can actually be really meaningful. Um, this one it, I think is really just a hundred percent flex right now. But if you if you want to build the Eiffel Tower, just have have fun. Then like absolutely do so. But be aware that this hundred prestige as France. And, and I haven't done anything to the to any of these AI other than give them level five tech and then um, fast build these wonders. You can see even at the very beginning of the game, a hundred prestige is not gonna make or break uh, France's position in regards to its rank. Next, we have Vatican City. 
um, Vatican City down here is just flat 25 prestige, 20 urbanization. But of course, because it is 25 prestige on a smaller country, that is going to have an outsized impact on their rank. Um, and so just be aware that if you are fighting in Italy, uh, that you, you would very much like to get control of Rome and therefore Vatican City, because that, that is going to help push you over the top in terms of being able to puppet or bully the other Italian miners. And then, of course, we have the last of our monuments, outside, of course, of the like the canals and whatnot, but I consider those kind of different. Um, we have the District of Columbia with the White House, and the White House, I think, is up there in terms of like competition for one of the best uh, monuments in the game because of this government administration building throughput. This means that, y yes, your government administration buildings will require more paper or telephones, but uh, who cares because they generate more more bureaucracy. So you have fewer bureaucrats that you require in order to, to do this. Not to mention that it is here uh, in the District of Columbia. This is not a particularly large state. Um, that you could try to slice off of the United States just to just to show them who's really in charge around here. So one of the one of the neat little things about the monuments, of course, is that um, they go to whoever owns the state. And so if you want to dramatically increase your access to prestige, then just like chase those around the map. I think some of them are are worth taking, even if even if you like rightly don't care that much about prestige, like the the White House is just absolutely insane. Um, but then you have to make a decision for yourself, like how much border gore are you willing to are you willing to thrust upon the world? Uh, but that's that's up to you. All right, um, I'm Walker. Uh, this was Monuments here on We Play Games. I I hope that this was helpful for everybody. Um, I there are some of them that obviously like like discussing Angkor Wat in the devout video wouldn't, oh, Angkor Wat in the devout video wouldn't have necessarily been a bad idea, but it's just that like, it, it's, it's so narrow, um, that it, it really doesn't matter in the broader scheme of things, unless you're trying to do, uh, something special, right? If you're trying to do something special, like, like have an insanely powerful devout in the end game, then a lot of those, those interesting, uh, monuments go up a lot in value. But yeah, I think top top for me probably are Forbidden City, Anchor Wat, and White House. And then after they get constructed, um, I really like Statue of Liberty. Moscow Gen is strong, but it is a it is it is a local education uh, access bonus. Um, I think I'm pretty sure. If you know for sure if the Moscow Gen is not local and is rather um, government like for your entire empire, let me know immediately because. I, I'm pretty sure that it's just in state, but if that is a local, if a, a, an empire-wide 20% uh, bonus to, to education access, then this might be the strongest in the game. All right, uh, that's Walker. Take care.